the middle of May last year, this was basically a big dirt field. Initial research shows there's approximately 35 square miles of that kind of space that could be repurposed just in Orange County and LA County alone. Dream of mine is that we take this and turn it into small gardens of Eden. In about 10 months, we've completely changed the face of this place and created this incredible edible garden. This farm has given me an opportunity to kind of experiment and showcase my talents and take chances. I was experimenting with vertical gardens in 2009 because a lot of my clients had said, food is a great amenity, how do we bring some food out to these islands? And I thought, well, even though you're in Bora Bora in French Polynesia where it rains a lot, nobody's collecting water. So I started looking at these systems for them and then realized, oh my God, my own backyard is painfully in need of these systems. And I thought, you know, what if we could find vertical gardening tools, high efficiency tools, when we could get people to start using it. For places that would be food deserts, inner cities where you don't have the land option to grow food, this model can be implemented in a lot of places where food is needed. Of course, if you live in the urban environment, it's very difficult to have acres of beautiful organic soil to grow in. We also have to be very conscious that we're working on $4 million an acre land around here, so how do we push the envelope? The idea that we can build farms like this throughout the urban environment and basically utilize or repurpose small spaces excites me. We're not wasting water, not wasting fertilizer, so this to me represents energy security and energy independence. High density, high efficiency, I think we'll see some amazing results. My little brother's boy, he was eight years old, had a problem with his kidneys. It was an autoimmune disease, very diet related. We almost lost him. It was a feeling I was not only frustrated, but I was mad. We gotta do something and I have the knowledge to do something. That's what drove me to becoming a farmer. Most of uh, the autoimmune diseases that we're experiencing nowadays are a result of a poor diet or deficiencies in the food supply. I ended up having my little brother's boy over here after seeing him in the hospital all hooked up. He actually stood up, started eating lettuce. And I looked over and I said to my brother, come here, look at Aiden, he's eating. And uh, he's eating lettuce and the lights went on. For the short time I've been doing this, I've actually lost a lot of weight too. With the work I was doing, you know, I ate fast food all the time, it was horrible. This food here has got tremendous nutrition in it. There's so many good foods out there and since I've been working with Eric, I've actually learned how to eat better and learned how to prepare food better. If I break a leaf off here, a little bit of white milk, we call that romaine milk. That's very powerful antioxidant. That's actually what makes this lettuce so good for you. Food is very important, fresher the better. Building nutrient density in plants is going to become very important. On top of that, you're creating stronger plants. You're creating a system that actually uses 70, possibly even 80% less water, 50, 60% less fertilizer. We're back to a very nutritional process. The farm that you see behind you here is our Alegria Sox farm. 13,000 plants, one-tenth acre, about 130,000 plants an acre. These are polypropylene socks. Not only are they prolific food production systems, they also use about 70% less water. We're seeing that we're getting about 90 to 95% of what these plants need in them because we can control the soil that goes into the sock. We experimented with these socks growing kale and you can see that it's absolutely amazing how it works. We can grow these big, beautiful, perfect beets in a controlled sock system. I look at this as a, in a fantastic new amenity that's being slowly adopted here in Orange County. Imagine how all of a sudden now we can take over those unutilized areas and repurpose them with a system like this. The potential here is, is phenomenal. Now imagine thousands of these farms run by veterans, youth, homeless. They can be taught to do this. It's a very simple system. My love really is try to squeeze out every inch of land we can and grow as much food in the urban environment. I see that we've got to start conserving water, we've got to rebuild our soil systems, and we have to find far more efficient ways to farm in the urban environment. Now we can take over those unutilized areas and repurpose them with a system like this. We're not trying to replace big ag. What we're trying to do though is supplement it. Most of these blighted properties that exist are in very poor neighborhoods. Well over a couple hundred thousand pounds a year is given to needy people right off of these farms. We had this crazy idea about the great supermarket at the great park. What if you could sit in a restaurant surrounded by these small fields, look out the windows and watch people picking your food? 
Imagine 10,000 homes with people riding bicycles. Drive the bicycle up to the farm and ask for three pounds of kale and watch it get picked. Where do you think you're going to get better food than that? And that could all be done here at the Great Park.